say more. This is the first ever visit of Ukrainian head of state into Malaysia. Mm -hmm. and that's why we pay so much attention to it, because uh, none of Ukrainian presidents before mm -hmm. have ever visited Malaysia. So mm -hmm. this is the first, and we believe a very important step towards uh, building uh, our relations stronger. Mm -hmm. Since uh, basically the establishment of the diplomatic relations back in 1992, mm -hmm. our countries have enjoyed excellent relations. We don't have any differences, we share a lot of common values, a lot of uh, same approaches, let's say, to the United Nations Security Council reform and some other things. So basically, uh, we don't have any political differences. And of course, uh, the trade and economic cooperation was also a big part that helped to build this stronger bond between and Malaysia. Well, uh, this is a topic that of course uh, cannot be avoided because both Ukraine and Malaysia, again together with Australia and the Netherlands, we've been working closely mm. on that, on the joint investigation mm. team and both uh, in the United Nations to make sure, you know, that we create the avenues to, 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 for the justice to be served. Of course, I believe uh, the two leaders will touch upon this issue when they meet up. And uh, my <coughs> understanding would be that uh, they will exchange views on that. Mm -hmm. we, because uh, I understand that uh, because of the, uh, let's say, peculiar position of the United Nations Security Council mm -hmm. that was shaped after the Second World War, you have five permanent members that can veto any decision. So no matter how many members will vote in favor of one decision, just one member can veto the whole decision, so it mm -hmm. will be a no-go for the decision. So uh, I think, and that's probably uh, where we share the approach with Malaysia, that this is a bit unfair system and this should be changed somehow, you know, this mm -hmm. issue of building a more <coughs> relevant United Nations Security Council is a challenge for international community. Because uh, we've been talking to many partners and a lot of countries are quite unhappy, you know, that uh, given the realities of the 21st century, you know, the United Nations Security Council should be more fair in mm -hmm. terms of representation, in terms of decision-making process, more transparent and more fair. So, uh, as far as MH17 is concerned, of course, the leaders, I'm sure, they will discuss the ways how to engage the mechanism of the international or national law mm -hmm. to make sure that we'll be able to legally prosecute those people who will be identified in the investigation report. The investigation report, as you might have heard, will be ready hopefully by October, yeah. later in the, in the autumn this year. So, and after that, we'll probably be more specific in terms of what steps should be taken by all sides involved to make sure that you know, we'll do the job properly. Okay, the, the, the agenda, the bilateral agenda is quite tight, I should say, because this is the first ever visit, you know, so we've tried to encompass as much as we can. However, we try also to be focused on some particular priorities mm -hmm. so that we'll not try to spend a lot of time talking and then we'll not have any, you know, concrete result after that. So basically, the uh, objective number one mm -hmm. is to build stronger relations between our leaders, between the President mm -hmm. Poroshenko and Prime Minister Najib. Mm -hmm. They've been talking on the phone on a few occasions. Mm -hmm. They met last year in the in New York General Assembly mm -hmm. uh, on the sidelines. However, this is the good opportunity, I believe, to make sure that, you know, our president and prime minister may have some time to spend together, you know, to build this. Because uh, after all, you know, no matter how important the government business is, it all comes to the personal relationships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you know a person and he calls you on the phone, you know, when you pick up the phone, you can visualize the person on the other side of the line. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, somebody that you have very basic idea about. So once you build this bond, mm -hmm. I think it's much easier to communicate on a number of issues. And the uh, other items in the agenda, of course, uh, trade and economic, because both countries, uh, I think Malaysia is quite in a fortunate position, I should say, in terms <coughs> of uh, economic growth, mm -hmm. because Ukraine being a part of the foreign aggression, uh, our economy is not in a very good situation at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because of the occupation of Crimea mm -hmm. and the eastern territories, we lost 25 percent of our gross domestic product. Oh, okay. So it's it's a huge blow, 25 percent of of the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, not GDP, I would say, the economy. The economy, yeah. okay. Yeah, because a lot of our industrial plants and uh, factories were located in these territories. So yeah, okay. now what the government is trying to do, we are trying to reshape and basically restructure the economy, which will be focused more on two specific sectors. Mm -hmm. We have a program, uh, President put forward the program called Ukraine 2020. Okay. Okay, and according to this vision, that, uh, by the way, you know, it's, uh, I don't, we don't want to pretend that we take copyrights from Wawa Sun 2020. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, in UK, it's related because president is elected for five years. So yeah. he actually made the program for five years. So basically, he identified two sectors for, for the economic growth as an engine of, for, of economic growth. It's uh, information technology mm -hmm. and agriculture. Mm -hmm. And we believe those sectors, Ukraine is uh, in the top uh, uh, world's top exporters of the grain, wheat, mm -hmm. uh, uh, maize, mm -hmm. some other agricultural products. Mm -hmm. So one of the major items what we export here to Malaysia is sunflower oil. Mm -hmm. So we export mm -hmm. quite a lot of it. And Malaysia, of course, uh, one of our top suppliers of palm oil. Mm -hmm. 